Welcome, I'm Todd Robbins. Let me tell you a story. It's a story about choices. Now we all make choices, a countless number of choices during our lifetime. And we like to think that the big choices in life, you know, where to live, what to do for a living, who do we share our lives with, we like to think that these are the most important and yet sometimes a simple choice can be so very significant, often in ominous ways. Andrew Kaczynski and Robert Young Jr. made a choice, a simple choice. Unfortunately, they made it on a night when the vampires were out for blood. Come with me as we journey to places that have a history soaked in blood. Come with me as we travel down a road darkly. It was August 29th, 1959. It was a very warm night. It was very humid. There was a heaviness in the air that just made you feel that something bad was going to happen. And something bad was going to happen. And it involved the vampires. The vampires were the name of a street gang made up of a bunch of Puerto Rican teenagers on the Upper West Side. They were led by a 16-year-old bad seed by the name of Salvador Agra. He was known as the Cape Man, because he often wore a long satin cape. I mean, when you lead a gang called the Vampires, you gotta dress the part. The Vampires had a problem. They had a beef with a guy named Frenchy. You see, Frenchy was a member of a white street gang called the Norsemen. Now, it's not quite clear what the beef was all about. Some say that uh, one of the vampires strayed into the turf of the Norsemen and Frenchy jumped the kid and roughed him up pretty badly. Others say it was a drug dealing turf dispute. Well, regardless of the reason, the vampires were pissed. So they called out the Norsemen, challenged them to a fight, to a rumble. And they chose the night of August 29th and the place neutral ground, a playground here in Hell's Kitchen, the playground right behind me. It's now known as the Matthews Palmer Playground. This playground is between 9th Avenue and 10th Avenue in the middle of the block and it cuts through from 45th Street to 46th Street. Remember that, that's an important element. Back in 1959, it wasn't nearly as nice as it is now. It was just basically a bunch of black top and chain link fence and a few pieces of playground equipment, some benches. It was used by children to play in during the day, but it wasn't locked up at night. So it was used at night by drug dealers, thieves and prostitutes. It was the perfect place for two gangs to come together and have it out. Andrew Kaczynski and Robert Young Jr. were two teenage boys that lived in Hell's Kitchen. On the night of August 29th, they had seen a movie in the Times Square area. They were walking down 45th Street here, and they made a simple choice. They decided to cut through the playground to get to their home uh, on 46th Street. And once they got in the playground, they decided to hang out a little bit. Unfortunately, they made that choice at a time when the vampire's bloodlust was at its peak. The vampires showed up they were all riled up. They were loaded for bear. They had knives, machetes, clubs, uh, chains. Uh, one guy uh, was known as the Umbrella Man because his weapon of choice was an umbrella. And the tip had been sharpened to a point like, a, like an ice pick. They were ready for a fight, the vampires, but the Norsemen never showed. Unfortunately for Andrew Kaczynski and Robert Young Jr., they never stood a chance. The moment the vampires went through these gates, they were in full fight mode. The vampires went up to the two boys, thinking they were Norsemen, and they jumped the two unarmed youths. One of the vampires took a lead pipe and hit him, and then the others chased them around like animals, cornered them, beat them mercilessly, threw them down, kicked them, and then they picked up the two boys by the shoulders and turned them around so that Salvador Agron, the cape man, could bring out his prized possession. It was a dagger with fake jewels encrusted on the handle and a razor sharp six inch blade. He used that dagger to stab each of the boys in their heart. 
They say that he laughed while he did it. Then he wiped off the blade and gave the signal, and the gang set free those two young men. And Andrew Krasinski and Robert Young Jr., mortally wounded, wandered out onto 46th Street here. They rang doorbells, they banged on doors, they cried out for help, but it was too late. They dropped to the ground and bled out. And that night, the gory history of Hell's Kitchen became a little bit bloodier. Here. A few moments later, police sirens were heard and the vampires scattered like cockroaches when you turn the kitchen light on. Salvador Agron was caught up in the Bronx several days later. That's where he was hiding out. The cops grabbed him while he was going through trash looking for scraps of food. When they grabbed him, he said he didn't care if he fried for the crimes in the electric chair and he hoped his mother would watch. Salvador Agron was tried for the murders, convicted, and at 16 years old, he was the youngest person to be given the death sentence in New York. But that didn't happen. Robert Young's father asked for leniency and he was joined in his cause by the former first lady Eleanor Roosevelt. Because of their efforts, Salvador Agron's death sentence was commuted to life in prison. So he avoided spending his last moments sitting in old Sparky, the electric chair at Sing Sing. Agron turned his life around in prison. He studied hard. For once his life, he actually learned something. And he became a better person, so much so that eventually he was let out of jail. And when he got out, he became an advocate against gang violence. He died fairly young. In 1986, he died two days short of his 43rd birthday. There's, there's an irony to this story. On the night that these murders happened, just two blocks away on 44th Street, right here at the Majestic Theater, now home to well, the Phantom of the Opera, but back in 1959, it was home to a different musical, a hit musical called West Side Story. And on that night of July 29th, this theater was filled with sophisticated New York theater goers. They applauded and cheered the wonderful acting and the singing and the sweeping music, and especially the glorious choreography that stylistically depicted savage gang violence, while at the same time, the real thing was happening two blocks away. Well, there you go, and there you have it. We all make choices. In the next five minutes, you'll probably make a dozen choices, and it's very possible one of those will be the last choice you will ever make. If, however, you should survive, well, I hope you will join me again for another little journey. Until then, I'm Todd Robbins, and I'll be seeing you in your nightmares. Thank you for watching. Say, do me a favor if you would, stab the like button and bludgeon that subscribe tab. And if you do this, there'll be many more dark roads we can travel down. I'll see you then.